Well, we've tried growing our sweet potatoes in a raised bed this year, hoping that the looser soil and drainage would give us a little bit better harvest. But you can tell that we're still not real pleased with what we're getting so far initially. Sweet potatoes really prefer growing in a sandy loam soil that's well drained that can heat up nicely during the growing season. And here in our Stillwater soils, we still have a little bit too heavy clay, even though it's in a raised bed and we've been amending it for several years. So just keep that in mind when growing your sweet potatoes or planting them. Now the two that we've grown this year are Jewel and Centennial. Jewel is one that was released by North Carolina. It's probably the most popular variety grown. Centennial is also very popular in Oklahoma, but it was released by Louisiana State. Both of them have an orangish flush and, and skin color, and you can see that inside, and they're both known for having a moist flush, which is what you want when you're growing sweet potatoes because of the way you cook them and eat them. So very similar potatoes. Obviously, this one has gotten a little bit too big for us, and we planted them really here in early June, so it surprised me that we got some of that size this early in the season as far as harvesting them. But traditionally, you want to plant them anywhere from late April to early June, depending on where you're in the state. Obviously, southern Oklahoma, you can plant them earlier. Northern Oklahoma, a little bit later, because the soil temperatures truly have to be warmed up nicely before you can get them in the ground. Now, these varieties are known for having a fairly good slip production. And a slip is basically a runner or a sucker that comes off a potato that you would keep over. And you separate those off, and that's what you're planting in the ground to start your production for this particular year. Now, you notice that I was going in there and I was cutting off some of the vines right above the ground and trying to pull them back. That's just to make it a little bit easier to harvest. When we grow them in the ground beds, we've gone in even with the lawnmower and just cut the tops off if it's dry enough to do so without damaging the crown. Here we're just using some shears. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see where the deer have gone in and helped us get a head start. They really like the sweet potato vines and they come in every fall when we grow them and start feeding on them and kind of printing them back to the ground. Now once you get the tops cut back, try to harvest them on a day that's not quite so muddy like this one. We've just had a lot of rain. But we use just a potato fork and we loosen the soil around the clump of potatoes and then just try to force that up as best we can, break them up. And traditionally, you would not really want to wash them. You want to leave the soil on. I've just washed these off to kind of show the color a little bit more. But washing them, there's more risk of bruising them. So some harvest pointers are to avoid or minimize any scarring or bruising. Also avoid exposure to hot temperatures or cold temperatures. That will affect how long you can store them. When you're uh, harvesting them, you've got to make sure you get them out of the ground before the temperatures drop below 55 degrees. That's soil temperature and especially before a freeze. If you get any kind of cold chilling damage, it's called, it causes a problem called hardcore and they won't store as long for you. They're harder to cook and not very tasty. Also, once you get them harvested, most people do not cure them long enough. You've got to cure them at a temperature of about 85 degrees with high humidity for five to seven days. That's very important. And you need to get them in and cure them within two hours after harvest. Then once they're cured after the five to seven days, store them at 55 to 60 degrees high humidity. Again, avoid going below 55 degrees or you'll get the hard core. So sweet potatoes are one of those good Oklahoma crops. Try your hand at them next year. And if you haven't harvested them yet, be sure and get ready because the fall is right upon us.